Beneath your feet, right now, an internet is pulsing. Not one of copper or fiber optics, but of fungal threads and root tips. A network that's been evolving for 400 million years, long before humans dreamed of sending their first email. Here in California's Sequoia National Forest, these ancient giants have been sharing information longer than our species has existed. But only now, armed with tools born from the digital revolution, are we beginning to decrypt their code. For those of us who've spent decades building the human internet, nature's network architecture sounds remarkably familiar. Packets of information flowing through distributed systems. Nodes and connections. Load balancing and redundancy. But while we measured our network speed in milliseconds, the forest measures in seasons. Dr. Sarah Simard from the University of British Columbia has spent 30 years documenting this biological internet. Her team has mapped over 30,000 connections in a single hectare of forest. Each one carrying vital data, warnings about insect attacks, news about drought conditions, resources shared between trees. What we're seeing, she explains, is essentially a neural network made of fungal tissue. The processing power isn't centralized, it's distributed throughout the entire forest. Using radioactive isotopes as traces, scientists can now watch resources flow through this living network in real time. Carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, the currency of forest commerce, moving from tree to tree through fungal bridges. But perhaps most fascinating for those of us who've architected digital systems, these forest networks implement sophisticated algorithms we've only recently developed ourselves. Load balancing. Mother trees redirect resources to seedlings in need. Packet routing. Fungi create redundant pathways ensuring messages get through even if connections are broken. Error checking. Chemical signatures ensure resources reach their intended recipients. At the heart of this system are what scientists call hub trees, the servers of the forest, if you will. These ancient giants are connected to hundreds of other trees through the fungal network. They're not just passive conduits, they're active network administrators. When researchers injected traceable carbon dioxide into one of these hub trees, they watched as it shared sugar not just with its own offspring, but with other species in need. The forest, it seems, has solved the challenge of interoperability that still plagues our human networks. But perhaps most remarkable is the forest's implementation of what we'd call edge computing. Rather than centralizing all decision-making, each node in the network, from the smallest seedling to the largest sequoia, can process information and take action locally. When a tree is attacked by insects, it doesn't just defend itself. It sends chemical warnings through the network, allowing neighboring trees to begin producing defensive compounds before they're attacked. It's a distributed security system that's been refined over millions of years. The implications go far beyond biology. As we grapple with making our own networks more resilient and sustainable, the forest offers proven solutions. Natural load balancing algorithms that have been battle tested over millennia. Security protocols that evolve in real time to meet new threats. Resource sharing systems that optimize for the health of the entire network, not just individual nodes. But perhaps the most humbling lesson comes as night falls in the forest. As bioluminescent fungi begin to glow, tracing the network's connections in living light, we're reminded that while we celebrate our digital revolution measured in decades, we're standing amid a much older network. One that has been computing, communicating, and evolving for hundreds of millions of years. To truly understand the forest's network, we need to meet its engineers. Not the trees, they're more like the users of this system. The real architects are the fungi. These aren't the mushrooms you might spot on a forest walk. Those are merely the system's backup drives, spreading spores to create new connections. The real network consists of microscopic threads called hyphae, each a fraction of the width of a human hair. Dr. Marcus Peterson of Stanford's Biological Computing Lab explains, what we're seeing is essentially a living fiber optic network. Each fungal thread can transmit chemical signals, transfer resources, and connect multiple plants simultaneously. The engineering is remarkable. Like our best network cables, fungal hyphae are insulated. Their cell walls prevent signal leakage and ensure messages reach their intended recipients. They can repair themselves when damaged. And perhaps most impressively, they can reconfigure their connections in real time based on network demands. 
the true genius of this system becomes apparent when we look at its scale. In a single teaspoon of healthy forest soil, you might find hundreds of meters of fungal connections. Scale that up to this entire sequoia forest, and you're looking at a network with more connections than our human internet. The numbers are staggering. A single mature tree might be connected to hundreds of others through this fungal network. Each connection capable of transmitting multiple types of signals simultaneously. It's like having millions of USB cables running through the soil, each carrying both power and data. Dr. Elena Rodriguez from MIT's Complex Systems Lab puts it in perspective. If we tried to build this network with human technology, the energy requirements would be astronomical. Yet the forest runs it all on sugar produced by photosynthesis. This brings us to one of the most fascinating aspects of the forest network, its power management. While our digital networks consume vast amounts of electricity, the forest network runs on solar power and organic computing. The efficiency is remarkable. The fungi receive sugar from the trees in exchange for their networking services. This powers not just data transmission, but also network maintenance and expansion. It's a self-sustaining system that's been running continuously for millions of years. But perhaps the most relevant lesson for our human networks comes from studying how the forest handles network security. In an age of increasing cyber threats, the forest's defense mechanisms offer intriguing parallels. When a tree detects a threat, whether it's an insect attack, a pathogen, or environmental stress, it doesn't just broadcast an alert. It sends targeted warnings to specific network segments, much like our most advanced threat detection systems. The network can even quarantine damaged or compromised sections, redirecting resources around the affected area. It's a level of network resilience we're still working to achieve in our digital systems. As night falls again over the Sequoia Forest, we can see another aspect of this network that puts our human efforts to shame, its ability to operate across multiple timescales simultaneously. While some signals race through the network in minutes, like warning messages about approaching threats, others move more slowly, carrying resources or information about seasonal changes. The network automatically prioritizes traffic based on urgency, a feature we strive for in our best quality of service protocols. But perhaps the most humbling lesson comes when we consider the network's age. These sequoias have been connected to this living internet for thousands of years. The fungi threading through the soil have been evolving their protocols for hundreds of millions of years. In that context, our few decades of digital networking seem almost quaint. Yet here we stand, at a unique moment in history, when our understanding of digital systems finally allows us to appreciate the sophistication of nature's original network. As we conclude this exploration of the forest's living network, we're left with a profound appreciation for the complexity and elegance of nature's solutions. The forest network reminds us that some of our most advanced computing concepts, distributed processing, edge computing, self-healing networks, aren't new inventions at all. They're principles that have been operating beneath our feet all along, written not in silicon and code, but in the ancient language of roots and fungi. A language we're only now beginning to understand. Next time on Digital Wilderness, we travel to Iceland's Aurora Belt, where birds navigate using quantum mechanics and nature shows us how quantum computing worked long before we dreamed of qubits.